Hello to everyone. Uh, thank you, Jacopo, for taking care of the organization. So today we have Tianki Hu, who is a student that just arrived uh, in the QLS group that will be uh, among us for uh, at least a year. Uh, Tianki is a statistical physicist with specialist in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the statistical physics of, of learning. Uh, in particular, he studied a lot of uh, restricted Boltzmann machine, which uh, I think will be uh, the subject of this talk. So, Tianqi, uh, welcome and, and thank you very much. Yeah, thanks a lot. Okay. Thanks everyone to give me this opportunity to share some of my, my, my research. So now I will scale, uh, share my, my screen. Okay. Uh, okay. Sorry. Okay, now I share my screen so everyone, everyone can, can see, right? Uh, I mean, you, you, you can see my screen, right? Yes. Okay, okay. Okay, so, okay. so uh, thanks, Hi, can I? So, yes, we can uh, see the slides, but uh, the voice is a little bit... Uh, um, probably because there is a little bit of echo in the room. So, I don't know, maybe if you open the window, maybe... I, I, I will give that to thank you. Uh, you mean I open the window? Oh. Yeah, there is a little bit... Okay, no. Okay, thanks everyone. So, the, today, my, uh, the seminar, is my talk is about the physics law of unsupervised learning in neural network. And I'm Chen Qi, and I'm from the Hong Kong University of Science Technology, and I am a physics. So now I want to share of some of my, my finding about the, some, some physics understanding about the unsupervised learning. OK, so let me give you some uh, introduction of uh, what we want to research on. OK, so we. Oh no, that's um, now the AI or deep learning get a lot of uh, inspiration from the neuroscience. And now, and uh, we can see that the deep learning can also give some, some light on, on neuroscience back. So, so I just want to uh, share uh, some, now some opinions about these two fields. They uh, interact together and uh, pre previously we know the uh, convolutional neural network get lots of inspiration from the human beings vision system. But now we find that the deep learning, the deep neural network is also a very good framework for modeling the vision system and for us to understand the information process in, in our brain, for example. Uh, we can see that uh, in deep learning of convolutional neural network, there is our um, hierarchical architectures for, for uh, for models to to uh, uh, to process uh, an image, but in our brain, it's uh, similar from the retina to LGN and to V1, V2 to other air brain. And when you talk about uh, the uh, machine learning or deep learning, I think there will be three aspects we we need to uh, focus on. In, in that, the first is that the the express power of your models and, uh, and the generalization powers of your models. And then the most important is that we can put forward a, a an algorithm to, to, to training. But, but there is a very basic question beyond, uh, based on these three, I think, very important aspect for learning is that how much data we need so, I mean, we must answer that is there a, a simple model or toy model to can, can give us a, an, an analytical result about uh, what is the minimum data size for us. So we can, if we know that and we can answer that, okay, this models, how the trainability is, how the expert power is, and it's based on how much model, we, how much data I, I need to provide. So now we know that uh, when we talk about the learning, there are a lot, lot of different kinds of, of learnings. And uh, now I focus on unsupervised learning. Unsupervised learning, I think, is uh, the definition is easy, easy that we only have the raw data 
and I want to search for the hidden features from the data, but I don't have a label. And uh, I just can provide a, a, a pictures by Lu Kun, and he, he, he has a very famous um, uh, word uh, that just like I showed in the pictures, he seen okay, like the proof, the reinforcement learning is just like the cherry and the uh, uh, supermarket learning just like the ice, but the supermarket learning just like the cake, uh, just like the cake, it's, it's just a fundamental for us to understand our human beings' intelligent system. And also, um, you can see the ending from the co-separate herb. He also think that for a human being or for a biological, if a our human being, for, for example, if we are a baby, we come across the world and we face lots of data without a label. It's the first thing that we can do. And based, based on this, if we understand the unsupervised learning, we can get a more deep understanding of the other kind of learning. So our question is that, can we find some basic role to control or uh, uh, to uh, for for us to to understand it on uh, supervised learning. So next we uh, focus more on a very basic and simple models. We want to see if we can uh, get some. Excuse me. May, may yeah. I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Could you go back to the nice cake? Okay. Which uh, uh, nice cake? Yes. Yeah, so I can provide. Yeah. Okay. So, um, just just to put in perspective your uh, considerations, mm. um, unsupervised learning also uh, attempts at making sense of the design on the cloth which is on the table, and also the cup which keeps the cake. All these things matter, right? Yeah. But you were pointing arrows to the cake, which means that your attention is already directed to something which is rewarding. So I think that it's a bit diminutive to uh, sort of say that reinforcement learning cares only for a limited amount of information. And uh, that the, same, the way that you perceive an image is already strongly uh, conditioned by the fact that the meaning that you attach to the objects inside the image. Uh, yes, yes, I, I, I agree, yeah. Uh, yes, but I, I just want to uh, say that uh, it, uh, on, on, on learning is uh, more, I think, basic and for, for us to, to understand the other kind of uh, learning. So, so I, I, I just stress that, yeah. So sure, sure, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, so, so, so I, I just uh, gave, uh, so the, the previous, just, just the background I want to give you about why we have interest in, um, on, on this uh, model, okay? So, so now I just uh, turn to our uh, focus, uh, our topic today about the restricted Bresma machine. And the basic, the first papers I, I think to, okay, it's not, 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 not the first paper, but I, more famous papers by the Hinton on, on, on science in the 2006, if I remember correctly. These papers, they talk about the use the uh, restricted photo machines to just uh, reduce the dimension of the data. And the model he used is very, very simple, just like I show uh, the RBM is just a uh, two, 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 two layer neural network. And the first layer is the visible and the next layer is the heightened. So they are connected by the weight, uh, just in the photo is a, is a W2, right? So the restricted problem machine is an energy-based model. It means that, okay, we can see here, the, uh, the W is just like the W2 in these photos and the Ws connect the visible, uh, the, the visible unit and the hidden unit and, they, and, and, and this and, 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 the, uh, and this and this is just like, like, like the bias or the external field uh, on the visible uh, unit and the hidden unit. So based on this energy function, you know, we can use some, for example, the, uh, lots of famous algorithm, because, uh, for example, the contract divergence and the others, uh, the advanced version 
but they all based on the MCM state the metropolitan color to 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 sample from these distributions and you and use this sample to train in the weight to to improve the low likelihood and uh, this is the restricted problem machine the basic and uh, also based on this there are lots lot of more advantaged uh, version for them for the deep Burzma machine and the, the deep belief machine. But if we want to use the physics to analytical to get the results of this model, I think this will be too complicated because you can see there will, will be lots of visible unit and lots of hardened unit. For example, there will be 1,000 and 2,000. And I, I, I feel it's uh, difficult to, uh, to analytical. And now we turn to a very basic, can we turn to an, a very basic model? For example, if we only consider there is a one hydrogen unit here, and the data is the high dimension. Uh, are you still stuck on this slide, uh, reducing the dimensionality of data? Or I'm still on this slide, I don't know if it's uh, normal. Yes, yeah, so, sorry, can you, can you repeat? Mm. Are you still on the slide? Uh, the first slide on RBM, or there are other slides that you show sometimes in blogs? Uh, no, I, I'm just on the first slide about the okay. R RBM. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it gets stuck. And I... Okay, okay. I, I, okay, I just want to say in the hidden models, he just uh, talked about the, 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 the algorithm and he used the algorithm based on this um, uh, energy function. But my question is that can we? put forward a um, very basic uh, models for us to analytical get the result of how many data we need for training this uh, model. So, so because now you can see there will be 2,000 and 1,000 uh, units in here, but what we want to consider for a very simple case, I mean that if we only have one hundred unit, so what will happen? And okay, if in this case, we call this you know, uh, one bit RBM because we know that for the hardened unit, if we uh, consider it's a binary, for example, it's a positive one, negative one. So if there is a one hardened unit, we call it the one bit uh, RBM. And it's my co operator, they, they, they have a previous paper to talk about the, these uh, things about the one bit RBM. So if, if there is a one bit RBM, so the only weight of the features that we consider is, is the sign here, and the sigma is the data. And the A is just the data index. So we provide the data number is M and the dimensions of the weight of, of the features it is N. And so based on if there is only one heightened unit, the positive one and the negative one, so we can get the posterior distributions of the weight just like is this way. And Z is the partition function here. So if we analytical this model, uh, we can get the alpha C, the stressful of the, it, the alpha C is just the minimize of data. It's only, uh, it just, uh, okay, you can say that it's project that the beta's the um, power minus four. Uh, beta is just the inverse temperature. It means that uh, it just shows the noise level, the noise level of this model. We can see that if the temperature is high, I mean that the, the noise is, is large, so we need more data for us to, we should provide more data to this model for, uh, for that to get uh, some useful information. So I can give you a, a feature here, a, a figure here, so you can see at the different, different um, temperature, you can see the, uh, there is, is a phase transition here, so it's, it's just the second phase transition because it's continuous. And you can see the different temperatures the, from numerical or algorithm and for the theoretical predict. It has different uh, stress holes and first it's just like one and next it is just like 2.5. And they are show different behaviors of the stress hole to show the physical relations from zero. The, 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 the zero is just the overlap, the, the, this other parameter. If this other parameter is zero, it means that the, the machine, the personal machine, haven't learned anything uh, from the data, right? So, so the, yeah. uh, 
Can you remind me, uh, beta is the yeah. temperature uh, of the model with which you generate the data? Yeah, be, yeah yes, beta, beta is just the inverse temperature, and the data also generates based on this temperature. Okay. Yeah, but... Excuse uh, me, what is on the horizontal axis uh, here? Okay, the, the, the x uh, read just the r alpha. Alpha, okay. Alpha, because, because I just assume you that alpha equal to n, uh, r alpha equal to m, m over n, the m is the number of the data and the n is the dimension of the feature. Yeah, so we can, okay, you can, you can see for example, for, for this, uh, for this line, we know that the beta equal to one and the r alpha c equal to uh, one minus uh, power, power, uh, power, power minus four. Uh, so it's equal to one. And for a new, 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 for a numerical, also you can see it's 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 match, match well, and the when beta go to a point eight, so if you put point eight into this equation, you can get the position of the stress call of the fixed position, the critical point. Yeah. Okay. So so the, the, uh, this, this is the one bit RBM. So we can get. Uh, we call this the spontaneous symmetry breaking because before that, uh, we can say it's just like the random gas because this, there's no, no bias of the weight to be positive one or negative one because here we only consider the binary case. And because uh, we don't know uh, if they're positive or, or, or negative, so we can see the random gas. But if the data is more than the structural alpha C, we call it as right, that spontaneous symmetry breaking uh, appear and the machine begin to learn something from the data. Oh, okay. And based on this, and we, if we want to see that, okay, we know that based on this, there are some other, um, other guys to, uh, to do some um, I mean, uh, numerical work, for example, in B Bala and the Peter Solis, and they also, uh, training some uh, research bottom machine. And uh, I, I just, you can just show you here, the P is just a hidden unit. They find that no matter P equal to one, two, three, five, or 10, the alpha C, the, the critical point, is just like uh, very, very similar uh, uh, positions of the, 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 uh, the, their gamma is just what I call the alpha. So he just do this by the uh, simulation and he didn't give the, uh, the result. So that th this will um, let me think that can we get a um, formula or to analytical solve that if there is a more hidden unit, can we decide the alpha C if there's a more hidden unit and this, if there are hidden units, the hidden feature has some correlation. So what there, uh, is there will in, in fact the R alpha C and so it is what I want to solve the next step. Okay, so because they put forward that the stress call didn't depend on the number of hidden units. So can we uh, prove this is what I um, uh, re 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 research in, uh, in, interest in. So, so next step, we can consider, we try to prove, um, I mean, the proof means that we can use some physics, no regular way to prove that. Okay, so uh, based on this, if we consider the more hidden units, we consider, first we consider two hidden units here. Okay, so you can see this is the RBM and uh, the IJK is just the, the, the input data and the XY is the two hidden uh, units and this is the two uh, features that uh, can say one and can say two. And based on this, uh, we, we can consider a factor graph here. So the factor graph here, so you, we can just put the i, j, k here is just the weight. And the every weight, we can know there we have two elements. First is from, okay, their index is also i, but the first from, the feature one and next is from the feature two and the data so that's like the count string uh, like a count string to count string the values of the uh, every element of the uh, weight if there is a no 
data to constrain the every element of the weight will be positive one or negative one and just randomly but if more data are shown here so there will be show some bias, bias right okay and uh, based on this we can know that if we if you give me a lot of data we can infer uh, the, the features uh, from the, the data. So we can write a big, based, on, a big, uh, based on the Bayes law, we can know that if we, uh, this, this is the, the, the log likelihood here, and uh, this is the posterior here. And uh, what we find that different from the 100 units, there will be two partition function here. The first partition function is based on the uh, likelihood in that it's related to the consign one and the consign two. The next uh, partition function, the sigma outside, is based it just uh, not related to it's just the average of the, all the con con consign one and consign two. So we have to solve these two partition function that is analytical without that is an analytical expression for these two replica uh, to the, the two partition functions and we can uh, get the results and because you if you know the previously in the physics we only consider one one partition function but but now we we, we, we have two so can, can we solve it okay so, sorry, can you, can you explain again the meaning of these two partition functions? How do they okay. okay, 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 yes, so, okay, so we can say that, okay, so from, okay, so from the expression the P uh, sigma A based on the side, this is, uh, this is a di distribution, right? So this distribution, so there, you can say there are uh, two consigned, consigned one and consigned two, but this this distribution that has a partition functions basically uh, it is all it's only related to the compare one and the compare two. So this z this partition functions is just related to the every p consign a based on uh, p sigma a based on the consign right. I mean every so because of p sigma a based on the feature is a probability distribution. This probability distribution that have a position function. Okay, okay, I see. Yeah, yes. And the next, that's it. The, it now we have M data, and you just pro product that. And after your product, you have to sum over the consign one and the consign two, right? So the dominator become another position function. So the, I mean, the sigma here just sum over all the consign, uh, uh, sum over all the feature one and feature two. We know that for the z, they can they can one and consign two. They just sum over all the data sigma, but he didn't uh, consider. Uh, I mean, they just uh, sum over the uh, sigma, but uh, uh, but uh, the omega here. Sum over the data and sum over the feature, so there will be two position functions. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm clear, and I think if you okay. understand, yeah, okay, uh, okay. So there are two position functions. We have to deal with these two position functions. Okay, if you uh, see here, there are the two position functions, and the first we can see if there is only two hundred units. Because n is a very high dimension, and we can use the Taylor expressions, and find that the partition function z, we can get the analytical result. It's only related to the q. Q is just like the correlation between the two features. So this will be um, all the parameters uh, after we will use. So because of this, now we have no how to deal with these two position functions. Because in our case, the first position function z, we can get the analytical result when n is a high dimension here, okay? And if, if, if we have already known z here, and we, the only, the only remaining position function is just omega outside. 
So we can use some, so from, okay, if, if we know this, and we can use some algorithm to, to, to training it, because we can use the cavity method. Uh, I, I didn't show the details, but I just, we, we can just define the message from the factor to, to, to node and the node to factor and to, to training this model and uh, we, we can get the merging probabilities of, a, of each consai one and consai two, just like the uh, magnetism for us to, to infer. And now we can learn these features from wrong data, but if we want to prove the phase uh, trans transition, the critical point, and get the whole phase diagram and what we need to do next, so, so we need to use the uh, replicas method from statistics physics to get the analytical expressions of the free energies of, of the position functions, the, the, the capital sigma here. So this average, we have to average on the architecture and mean that the distributions of weight and on the data samples. So we do this too, uh, we, we call it the quint average and uh, then we just, uh, okay, there is a replica um, trick in that we just copy the system to n, n times and it makes n go to uh, zero and we can get an, an, an analytical expressions of this free energy. Okay, and based on this um, replica method, we have to define how many of the parameters we need. Okay, so next we think here, we need to define eight other parameters. I, I will uh, just uh, show you that. Okay, now we have two features, right? So these two features, and uh, because now we, we use a teacher-student uh, scenario, it means that there is a, a teacher, they have two, two features. We call this a feature one true and a feature two true. And uh, our students has also two features. We call this a feature one uh, gamma and a feature two gamma. Gamma is a replica index. So these two features uh, also have a uh, overlap. We call it R, so it's order parameter. And the every features with is, is true. Uh, teacher's features uh, uh, also have overlap. We call it T1 and T2. And it is, I cro cross it, the every features which they are uh, different uh, teachers weight, for example, the students, the, the students, the feature one with the, uh, the teachers uh, feature two. So we call it the, 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 the uh, tall one and the tall two. And the every feature, they have their uh, self overlap, just like the uh, EA parameter. Okay, so we can call it, it just like the, Q, uh, the Q1 and Q2. And the every two features, uh, from a different replica index ha has a, a small r and the same replica index that we can call it the capital R. So if we define this eight order parameters and also we will introduce the their conjugate eight order parameters in, in the conjugate space. So if we solve these equations, so I think finally after some calculation, we find a very elegant uh, formula of the alpha C Okay, so now the Q, I can just show you here. Q is just the correlation because the two features. And we can see that the RFC depends on the, the beta is just the noise levels of the inverse time feature and the Q is the feature, the, the overlap. So in the two, uh, two has in the case, if Q is equal to zero, it means that if these two features are just orthogonal, so the alpha c is equal to beta um, my, power my, uh, minus four. So it's equal to the 100 unit case. But if q is not zero, so we can see the alpha c will reduce. And I mean that more uh, hydrogen unit and their have correlation will reduce the data, the minimal data the need. It's better for us, uh, for us to learn it because these two related uh, uh, features can provide some information to us. So I think it's common, uh, it, it just makes sense, but uh, we use uh, more analytical to express this re result. And, uh, and so we, we can, uh, I just put the uh, figure of the how the 
beta and Q will influence the alpha C. And another thing I think very interesting that based on the previously results, uh, if I just find that, okay, I just find this, this figure, I mean that when Q is very small, you can see that when, when Q is very small, so the alpha C just reduced uh, very sharp. But when Q become more, more large, so it will just uh, not uh, reduce uh, very large. And finally, it, it will re reduce to just 0.5 uh, level here. So this makes me feel that the weak correlations will do better, right? So we can know that in the neuroscience, and we all know that the neuroscience, the, 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 the the correlation between the different synapses, uh, just like the one over square n and the one over n, this um, this order, and uh, we see that in, in our models, it's just the neuroscience, it's just um, basic machine learning models. We know that the weak correlation is not equal to the no correlation. It's very it, it shows it's significantly important because the weak correlation here show his power to reduce the data you need is uh, very uh, significant here. So you can see it's very, very sharp. So I think it's the very first uh, surprise for us to show that the models we consider here has such a pro property. Okay, next the things uh, we uh, get that. Now we have eight uh, other parameters and we get the shadow point equation of this uh, eight order parameters. So we think uh, this is the equations for the unsupervised learning because if we solve these uh, eight order parameters, also the, there are, uh, it will be eight conjugate to the order parameters. So actually it will be uh, 16 or the order parameter here. If we solve these order parameters, we, we, will, so we will know that how when alpha become, become large, these other parameters will change. And uh, so how this system will be is because now we know that the different features will, will, will learn different from the two teachers, right? To, 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 to two teachers wait. So we can see what will happen. So what we will see that we find the whole face diagram of this um, system. There will be uh, a picture here. So when uh, we see that the first we call that the uh, alpha C mean that the spontaneous uh, symmetry breaking the the, the, the the threshold is just what we get. Okay, it's just what what we get here. Uh, 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 just what what we get here. Okay, so we, we we call this alpha C is a spontaneous symmetry breaking threshold. So we call it it SSB the spontaneous symmetry breaking. Okay, so we can. Okay, so when the alpha is more than this uh, alpha c, so we can see that all other parameters will equal to zero. They will learn nothing in the symmetry state. And when alpha is begin the SS, uh, alpha c s s b, but it's more than the permutation symmetry breaking, and we we we, we will find that all the t one t two tau one tau two is equal, and the q one q two and r is equal. It means that in these regions, there will be symmetry on the students and the teachers. So the students can't distinguish each other because of this. Uh, if you, because we know that the T1, T2 is to di distinguish the different parts of the feature one or, or of the feature two, but in this case, there will be no difference because in these regions, they just begin to learn, but they just learn the common part. If the students learn the common part, they can distinguish each other because they, their um, different part is just in a random, it's just the overlap will be zero. So if they only learn the common parts, so the, all the overlap will show some symmetry here. So I think it's a surprise for us that the system will be automatically first learn the common parts. Maybe I think um, it makes sense because if you, for example, if you first learn math and then you turn to physics and you are first want to learn something there that have some, some similar, I think it's easier for you. And then you go to, to learn the different uh, aspect of these two fields. But I think from the equation of the system, we find it interesting because it will 
the, the, the learning of this system will also show the similar behaviors. They first learn the common parts. And the next, when the alpha uh, more bigger than this red hole, we can see that the Q1 and the Q2 equal, but it's not equal to R. And the next step that uh, when the uh, uh, when the alpha was more big, so it will be a, it will be so some uh, bifurcation here, and R will be have a uh, so you can see the R will be have have a turnover here, and the Q1 Q2 is always same because it is just the overlap of, of, of the Cassel one, uh, the student Cassel one, the student Cassel two, but we know that in in this region, so the the Q and the R they have just to separate because the student began to learn the different parts. And when, when R has a turnover here and when R just go to from, from increase to reduce, it means that the two teacher will be, will be separate. So now the students began to know we are different and they also began to know that their, their teachers are also different. So the, they have distinguished that the reason of why there will be two solutions is that there will be uh, some uh, permutation symmetry because you can also see the first one is your teacher, or the second one is also your, your teacher. So because of the, the, this permutation symmetry, there will be two bifurcation of this uh, solution, but their free energy will, 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 will be same, okay? And uh, we can know that, okay, so we can, from the numerical result, so we can see uh, this is what, what, what we from numerical predict of the SSB, and this is what, what, what we predict by the uh, permutation symmetry breaking, we call it the PI, uh, PSB. And the finally, when alpha will be larger and larger, the small r will, will turn to the true correlation level. We, we, we said it is equal to 0.3, it's just the, from theoretical, we just said so. When the, uh, alpha, when the alpha is, is large enough, we provide more data, then the two features will learn, they are, we, we, we will turn very, very similar to the true features of the teachers, and their overlap will turn to the true overlap of the teachers. So this uh, numericals and we uh, match very well of our theory. And also we can see uh, the red one is just the common part, and the black one is the different part. So we can see after uh, the Q and, and R has just separate, so you, you can see I, 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 at the beginning part, uh, the alpha C, when alpha C, uh, when, when alpha is very, very small, so the different part they have to learn, and after they separate, the two students begin to learn the different parts. And, and, uh, before that, they just learn the common part. So you can see they just learn some common part. And after alpha, uh, beyond the alpha C, so you can see the common part is just very uh, stable, but the different part, they just learn more and more. Okay. So based on this, we will draw the whole fish diagram of, of the, uh, of, 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 of these models is based, uh, there will be two parameters. The first is the beta and next is Q. So we can see that the first is just the, the random gas phase. It means that it didn't know anything and the other parameters are all, all equal to zero. And, bef and after that, we will turn to the SSB phase. SSB means that the potential symmetry breaking. It means that the student began to learn something common and the overlap will not equal to zero. And after the SSB, and, and the two students began to learn that we are different, and they began to learn their different parts. And then after that, they be, we can turn to the PSB team, meaning that the teacher will also, the, the, the students will realize that not only they are different, their teacher are also different. So they began to learn that. And uh, now we can just uh, just draw the whole of this diagram here so based on these eight equations. So I think this will be, because we know that the permutation symmetry so we talk here is um, very common because if we have more data, more hydrogen units, there will be more compli complicated uh, permutation symmetry here. 
So we think that maybe the on, maybe the unsupervised learning is equal to the FFB plus the PSBS and the PSBT. So we think maybe this we just find some nature of the of, of, of unsupervised learning here. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I think we have some uh, two contributions here. That first we show that if if the overlap equal to zero, the critical learning threshold is not dependent on the number of the hardened neurons. But now we have only proved in the n equal to two, but we didn't go to n equal to do five, ten, and more. We didn't try, but we saw that in n equal to two case, the critical points uh, just uh, match what the Bala and the Peter Sotos do. They, they are gas, we, we, we match well. And next, that we know that the weak correlation is not no correlation. The weak correlations will reduce the data size very uh, significantly. And the next is that we we think the unsupervised learning will it will be a uh, universal that it will just uh, shows it will, it will express the SSB phase and the PSB phase. Okay. The next thing we want to consider is uh, that the role of the pre-knowledge. So based on the previous models, if we only plus, okay, we, we add some pre-knowledge to the system, okay, if we just pre-knowledge our system of the how the true correlation it will be, and it's just like in the, in the best optimal case, so we, we can know that the alpha, so this uh, uh, gamma is just, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, this sigma is just what we get from for the alpha c, but we know that if we put the pre knowledge here, the alpha c will more re will reduce more. So it means that if we provide the correct pre knowledge, and it will help the system to reduce the minimal data they need to to to, to learn to learn from the data. Okay. So I just show the figures here that there show some difference of the pre-free and the with pre-case. We know that with pre-case, the minimal data will be reduced here. And how the fixed diagram with the, okay, I just show here, okay. How the fixed diagram of the, uh, if we have pre-knowledge here. So we can see just the, uh, uh, these two colors, okay, it, it, it's, uh, so uh, these two line and this uh, it's just what, what, what we call it, 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 it the pre-free case, but it just uh, these two line and it's just uh, with pre-knowledge. So we can see that if we have pre-knowledge, the PSBT and the PSBS, they merge together. So in the permutation symmetry breakage case, phase, there will be no two brush. There will be one, one, one case. So I mean that the the points of the uh, yellow, uh, the point of of the black and the red, they, they just separate, and the point of the R will be just turned over. They match together to to this point. So be, I, we we believe this because we now in a best optimal case. So it will be a little more reliable here and. The, Based on this property, we can have a more a symmetry and a fixed diagram here. And uh, so uh, I, I think this is what I um, introduced uh, above, it's just uh, I, 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 we have pu pu published in, in, in this paper. So I, I think uh, it's just uh, what we see that we find the permutation symmetry breaking. And I think we, it is what we call the the physics laws to 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 uh, very important to understand the unsupervised learning here. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, thank you. Yeah. So, so if okay. anyone has specific questions, please feel free. So thank you very much. So I I didn't. Uh, yeah. Understand uh, how does the structure of the data enters uh, in in your calculation? Oh, you mean the calculation of our uh, the, you mean the replica calculation here? 
Yeah, no, I mean, or in general, I mean, uh, yeah. one would imagine that uh, there are some data which are, uh, which have a lot of structure and a low dimensional uh, um, nature that should be easier to learn than uh, highly structured uh, uh, data. Uh, yes. Uh, here. Uh, the, uh, noisy data, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so now, now we just want to focus on one thing, that's how the permutation symmetry uh, in, in, in uh, I think the permutation symmetry is very common in our global learning. So we want to know how this permutation symmetry will, will, will influence and uh, what will happen if we consider the permutation symmetry. So how the phase diagram will, will be, this uh, what we, uh, uh, we can consider more here. So we just, you introduce lots of other parameters you can see here to see how this permutation symmetry will change with, with the alpha. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. So maybe, I don't know if it, yeah. uh, if this is related to Matteo's question, but what you consider is the is a teacher student scenario, right? So yeah, we the, the data student. is essentially the same structure as the, as yeah. the model that you're using to, to learn, right? Yeah, yes. Now we consider the teacher student scenario. For example, you can, you can see here, and uh, we, we have a teacher, and the teacher have two, two features, and the B feature one true, and the feature two true. And now we have a student, uh, we also have two, two feature, feature one and the feature two. But because of the, uh, but because of the function, it's just the, the even function. So if we change the consign one and the consign two, for example, if we first write a consign one, and next we write consign two, so the, the distribution will be same, right? So we want to know that because this shows some permutation symmetry, we want to know that how this symmetry uh, will, will influence uh, the, the, the system. This is the key point. What what we want to do? Yes. Uh, I wonder if you can understand more clearly of, of, of what we want to get because uh, we know that uh, there, there are I, I, actually there will be two symmetry. Firstly, if there you consider the, the consign one, if you consider it, it's the negative consign one, it, the, the distribution will be same. And if we consider it first the consign two and next the consign one, the distribution is also same. So we want so there will be lots of symmetry. So we want to see how this symmetry will, will, will influence the, the learning process. And I have a question. So yeah. uh, you consider an unsupervised learning setting? Yeah. Um, I, I know a bit more about the supervised learning yeah. thing and in, in, for example, in committee machines, there is a yeah, transition where uh, you consider a few hidden neurons. Yeah. Uh, at some point you have a so-called specialization transition where the, these hidden neurons uh, start to to align on different features while before the transition, all these neurons essentially encode the same feature. Is it kind of connected to this permutation breaking symmetry in your model? Is it of the same nature or? Yeah, yes, yeah, sure. Because you consider it's about the commuting machine that has a multi-layer case, right? And the multi-layer case, I, because I think the permutation symmetry is not only in unsupervised learning, in supervised case, just like you mentioned, on the two-layer two the community machine, and there will be some hidden, and they also show some permutation symmetry. And I believe, if I remember correctly, Sablinski and has some papers many, many years ago, talk about the, talk about the permutation symmetry of the community machines on, on the supervised case. But no, no, no one consider this on the on supervised case, so it's what we uh, focus on here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And did you also consider uh, uh, settings outside of the teacher-student setting, or for um, for me, for me, like, me, 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 me
you uh, you mean for the mis mis uh, for the mis mismatch match case, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Because firstly, uh, if we uh, actually if we uh, just as I pre present here, if we consider the if if we pre provide the true pre knowledge of the how the how the overlap of the two feature. This case is just the best optimal case. It's the match case, and the first one I, I, I consider here it is a mismatch case because the models I the, the model here is, is is different from different from the, the teacher because we for for the teacher models we know that we we, we can set the how the over how the correlation level of the two features. For example, you can set the Q equal to 0 0.3, 0 0.5, you can set it for teacher. But for students, you don't know this information. And because of this, there will be no uh, Nisamori identity and no such good uh, properties here. So because so we have uh, got a very uh, complicated face, face diagram. But if we set it in match, it means that if we consider uh, here it is just we, if we consider the, the, the true if we, we provide the true pre knowledge and we get in a bias optimal case, so the fish diagram will be uh, more 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 uh, more easy. So there will be only three fish diagram. The first is, is random gas and the SSB and, and the PSB. So the the, the two branch of the PSB will disappear. Because of the uh, base of optimal setting, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Any other question? Okay. Thanks. Now, yeah. All right. Yeah. So, if there are no questions, maybe we can stop here. Thank you very much, Chanky. Yeah. Thanks very much. Yeah. Thanks.